Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Dieters, editor-at-large for Muscle and Fitness Magazine. I am thrilled and honored to welcome you to the Muscle and Fitness Training System. This series, developed by the world's leading cutting-edge sports medicine and bodybuilding experts, is devoted to showing you how to carve out exactly the physique you've always wanted, whether it's a strong, chiseled, lean body or the massive muscle of a champion bodybuilder. We're talking rock-hard abs, massive arms, a thick chest, and mighty back and powerful legs. All of these are now within your reach because with this series, you'll learn the exercises and the programs to achieve the physique you desire. Ripped, sliced, six packs, eight packs, whatever you want to call it, everybody wants them. Flat, strong, sexy, rippling abs that make you feel great and look attractive. Well, congratulations. Here's your chance. On this program, we're going to focus on helping you carve the kind of abs that make eyes turn and heads spin. Abs that will not only strengthen your torso and support your spine, but abs that are crisp, visible, and unmistakable. To demonstrate expert technique, we're honored to have some of the world's leading bodybuilding champions with us today. Why do we turn to bodybuilders to learn the tools and techniques for maximum efficiency and maximum safety? We go to bodybuilders because they are the experts. If you wanted to learn how to play basketball, you might study with Michael Jordan. How to swing a bat, Mark McGuire. Well, if you want to learn the intricate details and strict control that resistance training can offer you, you want to watch Gunther Schlierkamp and other top Olympia contenders and some of the highest paid fitness models in the world that we have with us today, and watch them closely. The truth is that the same techniques that are used by every top bodybuilder in the world can also be used by you, no matter what your age, no matter what shape you're in, and no matter what your personal fitness goals are. So let's get to it. Sliced abs have become the hallmark of fitness, but that coveted look is not as far away as you think. What are the abdominal muscles? You have four paired muscles in the front and side of your abdominal wall. They are the exterior obliques, the internal obliques, transverse abdominis, and rectus abdominis. The external obliques are easily identified along both sides of the abdomen. If you keep your hips stationary, the right and left external oblique muscles help you flex your torso towards your hips, as in crunches. Contracting separately, the left and right external obliques flex the torso to the sides and rotate your torso to the opposite side. The internal obliques are located underneath the external obliques and cannot be seen from the outside. They work with the external obliques to flex and rotate the torso. The rectus abdominis is the long, broad, strap-like muscle that consists of two vertical columns. This muscle typically has at least three horizontally running tendinous inscriptions that show up as grooves or cuts in your abs. This muscle is responsible for crunching down or reverse crunching, such as bringing your hips up toward your rib cage. They are what form the six pack, or in some cases, depending on your genetic makeup and the number of your tendinous inscriptions, the eight pack. That's something that can't be modified by training. No matter though, six pack or eight pack, great abs are great abs. As the first step to any workout, spend about five minutes warming up your body. That means literally getting the blood flowing, raising the heartbeat, core temperature, and metabolic rate with a few minutes of aerobic exercise. Stationary bike, 
treadmill, jump rope, whichever you prefer and whatever gets your motor running. Get into a groove. Don't waste a moment. Don't just look around. For these five minutes, start visualizing what you want to accomplish in your workout. See your goals and see yourself charging toward them. Think like a pro, grow like a pro. In this program, we're going to focus on your home ab program in the first section, then look at how you can make the best use of your gym in the second section. We're going to show you three types of home ab workouts. One for those of you starting out or starting up again, the intermediates, and then the advanced workout. Let's begin with the beginner routine, which will include the reverse crunch, crunch, and twist. For each, do two sets of 12 to 15 reps. See if you can bump up the twist to 20 reps, since it's your finishing exercises. Ready? Here we go. Although any type of crunch will affect the entire front portion of your abdominal wall, the reverse crunch targets the lower abs. To start, lie face up with your arms alongside your body. Bend your knees and raise your thighs until they're perpendicular to the floor. This is your starting position. Now inhale and hold your breath as you slowly roll your hips up toward your chest so that they're completely off the floor. Keep your legs slightly bent even as your knees come relatively close to your chest. Again, keep it smooth and controlled so that momentum isn't stealing the work that your contracting muscles should be doing. Now for the toughest part of the movement. Begin to exhale and slowly return to the initial position, thighs vertical, keeping strict control. No ballistic movements. Your job is to squeeze and contract the muscle. If you want to really increase the intensity of the reverse crunch, hold your head and shoulders off the ground. This tightens your upper abs, forcing your lower abs to work harder to raise your hips. The familiar basic crunch is still one of the best movements to develop your abs, but you must do it with 100% concentration and strict form. Start by lying on the floor. Bend your knees so that your feet are flat and put your hands behind your head. Now keeping your eyes focused on the ceiling, inhale slightly more than usual and hold that breath as you raise your head and shoulders as high as possible off the floor. Holding your breath gives you greater force of contraction and relieves tension on your spine by creating intra-abdominal pressure. As you raise up, round your upper back and slowly shift your focus downward toward the horizon. Hold this up position for a second or two. Exhale and slowly lower your body until your head and shoulder blades contact the floor. Relax, pause for a second or two, and repeat. A couple of cautions. Remember, don't pull on your head with your hands, which only puts unnecessary strain on your neck. Don't nod your head and don't twist your torso as you crunch. Sometimes you see people doing that to work the obliques, but we have better exercises for that muscle group. If you want more bang for your buck, you can extend your hands over your head or hold a weight squarely in the center of your chest and cross your arms over it. Also, you can hold your legs up in the air, place your feet on a bench or against a wall, and follow through with strict form. The beauty of this movement is that all you need to perform it is a pole and some floor space. Start by sitting on the floor with your legs extended and spread in front of you. Place the pole or broomstick over your shoulders, extending your arms to each end. Now twist from side to side no more than about 45 degrees using slow, deliberate movements which will not only protect your spine but also prevent movement from cheating your obliques out of their maximum contraction. Concentrate on twisting here from the waist, not from the hips or legs or from the shoulders or arms, which by the way should be completely relaxed. Some people like to do this exercise standing, but the seated version helps eliminate lower body movement. So perform this exercise seated, if at all possible. After you've spent a couple of months mastering the beginner's routine, move into the intermediate routine, which we'll demonstrate for you now. We'll begin with the air bike, three sets of 30 seconds each, then move to the straight leg crunch, three sets of 15 to 20 each, and finally to the side bend, where you'll do three sets of 12 to 15 per side. Let's watch the techniques of the pros.
You've probably all seen the air bike, but you've probably seen it done incorrectly, as people tend to get carried away with the fun of the motion. When that happens, you end up replacing muscle burning efficiency with momentum. The air bike works at all, uppers, lowers, obliques, so let's be sure to nail our technique. Lie on your back with your hands supporting your head. Raise your legs so your thighs are perpendicular and your lower legs are just above parallel to the floor. Inhale and hold the breath as you curl up. Bring your left elbow toward your right side while drawing your right knee in to meet it, as if riding a bike. Alternate sides, left, right, left, right, continuing the motion back and forth, breathing deeply and steadily. Staying with our focus on controlled motions, don't let your elbows flap across your body, but rotate your shoulder across in a smooth, focused movement. For the air bike, don't worry so much about speed, but concentrate on controlled motion and increasing your strength through more and more repetitions as you advance. For the straight leg crunch, lie with your back on the floor and your legs straight up in the air. Then, with your arms extended in front of you, curl up to bring your shoulder blades off the floor and slowly squeeze as you reach for those toes. Hold this peak position for a second or two. Then slowly lower yourself back down to the starting position. Don't jerk your body or use momentum. Keep it smooth and controlled all the way through. If this one is a little too difficult for you at first, Slide your glutes up against the wall and try it like that. After a few weeks, give it a go in the center of your room. It's a handy way to gauge your progress. The side bend is another classic. Stand straight with your feet shoulder width apart and knees unlocked. Keep your back flat and your head forward. Place your free hand behind your head and take a dumbbell in your other hand. Not so heavy that it pulls you down, and not so light that there's too little resistance. To begin, bend sideways at the waist, reaching toward the floor with your non-working elbow. The range of motion your spine allows is fairly limited, so you want to especially make sure that you are not overcompensating by swaying forward or back. Go slow and stay in control. Don't ever bend laterally more than about 45 degrees because this can strain your spine and send you straight to your chiropractor. Do your complete set of reps on one side, then work the other, increasing or decreasing weight to increase or decrease difficulty. If you've mastered the intermediate routine over six weeks or more, then you're ready for following the advanced routine. This four exercise routine offers four amazing ab slicers. First, the V-up, four sets of 12 to 15 reps. Then the crunch, four sets of 15, compounded with the hip thrust, four sets of 15, and then finally the oblique crunch, four sets of 15 to 20. Ready? Great. The V-up works both your upper and lower abs. Efficiency here depends on slow, controlled, straight back motions. Take your start position, lying on the floor, legs straight, and arms close to your sides. Now bring your shoulder blades a few inches off the floor while simultaneously bringing your feet up to roughly the same height. Inhale and hold your breath, then contracting your abs, crunch up slowly with your upper abs, reaching to touch your toes, while raising your legs high at the same time. Exhale and hold this position for about two to three seconds, then slowly lower your upper torso and your legs at the same pace. If holding your legs straight is too difficult at first, here's an alternative. As you raise your upper body into a crunch, pull your knees into your chest like this. Just keep it slow, steady, and deliberate with focus on technique every inch of the way. Later you can straighten your legs as you become stronger. We return now to the basic crunch that we performed in the starting up workout at the beginning of this program. But here we'll compound it with the hip thrust exercise. First, let's review the crunch. Start by lying on the floor, bend your knees so that your feet are flat and put your hands behind your head. Now, keeping your eyes focused on the ceiling, inhale slightly more than usual and hold that breath as you raise your head and shoulders as high as possible off the floor. 
Holding your breath gives you greater force and relieves tension on your spine by creating intra-abdominal pressure. As you rise, round your upper back and slowly shift your focus downward toward the horizon. Hold this up position for a second or so. Exhale and slowly lower your body until your head and shoulder blades contact the floor. Relax, pause for a second or two, and repeat. Now we're going to employ a variation of the Weider peak contraction principle to compound this exercise with the hip thrust. The hip thrust is a way for you to isolate your abs, using them to raise the entire lower half of your body off the ground. Start by lying on the floor with your arms at your sides, palms down. Now lift your legs perpendicular to the floor. Focusing your mind on your abs so that you use them only, lift your hips a few inches straight off the floor, pushing your heels up toward the ceiling. Your range of motion here should be very limited. Keep your movements slow and controlled without any rocking or jerking. And here's a pro tip. If you want to increase the intensity, try this exercise on an incline board and follow through with the same motion into your reps. The obliques control the rotation and flexion of your torso and are key for overall ab symmetry and strength. You're going to start by lying on your back with your shoulders flat on the floor. Then rotate your hips to one side so that they're almost perpendicular to your shoulders. Bend your knees and place your arms gently behind your head or cross them over your chest. Now to begin, inhale and hold your breath as you curl your head and shoulders up slightly, contracting your obliques Raise up until your shoulders are approximately 20 degrees off the floor and hold that position for a second or two. You don't want to twist or bend your head. Also, be careful not to push the head-shoulder raise as high as possible, which can strain your neck, which at the moment is in a vulnerable, rotated position. Finally, only raise your head and shoulders, not your rib cage, which will also put unnecessary pressure on your spine. Exhale and slowly return to the start position. Take a moment at the bottom, then repeat. As you've just seen, you can really hammer your abs at home and get a lot accomplished. But at the gym, you'll find excellent opportunities to work your abs from different angles and with different equipment that can laser focus the tension into specific muscles. I'm about to walk you through two intermediate programs. You can alternate between them on different gym visits. And then we'll take you through one advanced program. Program 1. The first program involves a raise, a crunch, and a twist, hitting all major ab areas. Start with a vertical bench knee raise, two sets of 12 to 15 reps. Follow that with a decline bench crunch, again two sets of 12 to 15, and finish with the exercise ball twist. Give it two sets of 12 to 20. Let's work on the vertical bench a minute. We've got two fantastic ab exercises we can do here, the knee raise and the leg raise. For the knee raise, step up into the vertical bench, grasping the handles and keeping your back and forearms firmly on the pads. If all you've got is a dip stand, that'll work fine too. Holding yourself up, bend your knees from 30 to 75 degrees, inhale and bring them up into your chest, curling your hips at the top to rotate your pelvis. Try to get those knees up as high as you can. Every inch will pay off in more work for your abs. At the top of the movement, contract hard, hold there for a second, then slowly lower your knees all the way down until they are straight again, and repeat. What you don't want to do is swing. Momentum here is the enemy as it robs you of exercise intensity. The decline bench crunch is crucial for upper ab strength and thickness to help that six pack become more prominent. Your lower abs will also contract isometrically and act as a stabilizer for the upper abs. Set the bench at a decline of roughly 30 to 40 degrees from horizontal. Or, if you're just starting out, begin with a 10 degree angle and increase the angle later on as your abdominal strength improves. Secure your feet under the foot pads and lie face up with your torso, shoulder, and head in contact with the bench. Look at the ceiling and cross your hands over your chest. To begin, inhale and hold your breath 
as you contract your abs, lifting your whole upper body off the bench. As you rise, curl up, contracting those abs, shifting your gaze now to the horizon. Your head should remain neutral throughout the movement. No nodding or bobbing. Hold this position for a moment as you exhale, then lower your torso. You want to keep the tension on your abs during the entire up and down movement, so do not allow your shoulders or head to touch the bench between reps. And for you extremists out there, you may want to increase the angle past 45 degrees, but I don't recommend it. There's no need to increase the blood pressure in your head. If you want to work your abs harder, put your hands behind your head, never pulling on your neck, and focus on curling your shoulders up, and then do exactly the same movement. That's plenty of intensity to develop great abs. The ball crunch is a great way to put your exercise ball to use to work your upper abs and obliques. Start by sitting on top of the exercise ball and place your feet flat on the floor. Slide forward slowly, rolling the bottom half of your glutes off the ball until your lower back is centered atop the ball. Now place your hands lightly behind your ears, inhale slightly more deeply than normal, and without pulling on your head, crunch forward and squeeze your abs rotating one elbow toward the opposite knee on the way up. At the top of the movement, hold the position, squeezing those abs, and then return back to the start position, rotating your body slowly and deliberately. Pause only for a second or two at the bottom, and repeat, focusing on that side of your body. Only when you finish the reps in that set should you work the other side. The second program, again, that you can alternate with the first on a daily or weekly basis, begins with the exercise ball crunch. And I want you to do three sets of those at 15 to 20 reps. Then we'll move into the vertical bench leg raise, three sets of 15 to 20, and finally the decline bench twisting crunch for three sets of 15 to 20. The exercise ball crunch gives you a little more stretch than the regular floor crunch. Seat yourself comfortably on top of your exercise ball and firmly place your feet flat on the floor. Slide forward, rolling the bottom half of your glutes off the ball until your lower back is centered on top of it. Now place your hands at the sides of your head. Don't grab and pull on your head, just rest your hands gently on the back of your skull. Now. Inhaling and holding your breath, crunch your upper body forward, making sure your abs are doing the work, lifting your shoulders up and forward towards your hips. When you reach the top of the movement, which is as vertical as you can get without falling off your ball, exhale and lower your torso back down again. The second exercise using the vertical bench is the leg raise. Again, step up into the vertical bench, grasp the handles, and keep your back and forearms firmly on the pads. Extend your legs, keeping them bent slightly to avoid stressing your lower back. Now, inhaling, curl your hips slowly to rotate your pelvis and bring your legs up as high as you can. Remember, Every millimeter you can squeeze out on the way up will pay off for you in stronger abs. Push yourself here, and when you can't lift any higher, hold that position, contract your abs, and slowly lower your legs, then repeat. Once again, avoid swinging your legs up or letting them flop down. Cool, controlled, focused movements. That's the key to maximum efficiency and results. To work your upper abs and obliques, adjust the bench so that your calves are resting on the pads and your ankles are snugly under the foot rollers. Sitting up straight, place your hands lightly behind your head and lower your torso slowly toward the bench and stop at about a 30 degree angle between your back and the bench. Inhaling and holding your breath as you crunch, twist as you come up, bringing your elbow toward the opposite knee. 
Don't jerk or thrust or sway or swing as you come up. Just nice and easy, nice and steady. Get a good contraction as you twist into the end of the motion. Hold a second, then follow the same twisting arc in reverse, lowering yourself again to about 30 degrees off the bench. Do all your reps for one side of the body, and when you've worked that side, then switch over to the other side, twisting the other way. If you're not able to do very many reps, use less of an angle of decline. Conversely, if you feel you're not getting enough resistance, increase the angle and go for it. Just a cautionary note, and we will make this point a few times in this program. Don't overdo the angle downwards. Keep it 45 degrees or less. There's no great benefit to going past that. We're going to increase the sets up to four for the advanced program. That means we're going to move through four sets of hanging leg raises, 12 to 20 reps, then four sets of cable crunches, 12 to 20 reps, and then we'll finish with four sets of oblique cable crunches, also for 12 to 20 reps. As always, watch our experts for perfect technique. This is a great exercise. I love the hanging leg raise. Jump or step up into a high bar and hang freely, making sure your feet don't touch the floor. Inhale and hold your breath as you bring your legs slightly behind your body, then quickly but smoothly raise them forward and upward as high as you can. Keep your legs straight but not locked as you raise them. At their peak, slightly above parallel to the ground, hold the contraction for one to two seconds as you exhale. Then relax slightly as you return to the hanging starting position. Pause momentarily, then repeat. If this exercise is too hard at first, bend your knees a little bit more as you raise your legs. The key here to really work the abs is to lift high. Because until you hit 30 or 40 degrees here, your hip flexors are doing most of the heavy lifting. So lift your legs as high as possible. The cable crunch is great because it works your abs through a greater range of motion than the traditional crunch. Not only that, it focuses more on the abs while excluding other muscles like the hip flexors. To begin, stand facing a high cable pulley machine and grasp the handles of a rope attachment so that your palms face each other. Take a few steps back and kneel down about three or four feet away from the base of the machine. Your knees should form a slightly less than 90 degree angle. Try not to pop up too fast or sway out of this position through the exercise. Lean forward and slightly arch your lower back. Your torso should be almost parallel to the floor. Bend and hold your arms at a 90 degree angle over your head. Now slowly contract your abs so that they pull your torso toward the floor until your elbows approach your knees. All this motion should originate from here, from the lower vertebra and then move upward. If your hips get involved, you're limiting the effectiveness of the exercise. Same is true if you're pulling with your arms. So focus and contract your abs, which will do all the work of flexing your torso forward, and you'll end up with a rounded back like this at the end of the movement. Right here, at the bottom of the movement, concentrate on squeezing your abs. Pause, then slowly return to the starting position and repeat. Remember. Move slowly and deliberately, and don't let momentum do the work for you. That's the cable crunch. Simple, powerful, thorough. This exercise offers a smooth range of motion as you work your obliques. Facing the machine, kneel down three or four feet in front of a rope handle connected to a high pulley. Turn your body about 45 degrees so you're at an angle to the machine. Then grasp the rope near the top or back of your head. Elbows bent and lock your arms in this position. All right, we're ready to begin. Inhaling, twist away from the machine to the opposite side, bringing one elbow toward the opposite knee. Crunch down at the bottom point of the movement, hold that, then return back up slowly along the same path, doing reps on one side first and only when you're done moving to the other side. Slow movements, deliberate, smooth, and controlled. There are three crucial, non-optional steps you must do to wrap up your workout. 
warm down, stretch, and replenish. I don't consider these as part of a post-workout routine because every serious trainer knows that these elements are as essential to your program as any lift, crunch, or pull down. When you're finished with your workout, move into a five minute low intensity aerobic exercise. Hit your bike, the treadmill, or whatever suits you best, but keep your heart rate under 100 beats per minute. This allows your metabolism to slow gradually and your body to recover in a controlled fashion. The second step of wrapping up your workout is to stretch the muscles you have just worked. For more detail on the importance of stretching, refer to the stretching pod at the end of this program. For now, remember that you should move through stretches with slow, deliberate, controlled movements with no bouncing or jerking. Start with the lower back stretch. Lying on your back, you pull your left knee toward your shoulder with both hands. Hold for 30 seconds, release, return to start, then do the same with your right knee. Repeat three or four times for each leg. Now we do side bends to stretch the obliques. Slowly bending over to the right into a comfortable stretch, hold there for 15 to 30 seconds. Feeling the stretch the whole time, then return to upright. Repeat for both sides four times each. The spinal twist stretch helps untie your obliques and stretch your lower back as well. Lying on your side like this, twist your torso using your opposite arm on the knee until you feel the stretch in your side. Hold for 20 to 30 seconds. Do both sides four times. Excellent. Replenish your body right after you're finished training. See the nutrition segment of this program for more information. Truly successful ab training has as much to do with the power of your mind as it does with the power of your obliques. With all the insight and expertise our team has brought to you throughout this series, I want to make sure that one critical point comes through loud and clear. Concentration means everything. Not just physically concentrating tension in your muscles, but mentally concentrating on technique, preparation, nutrition, and very importantly, on staying motivated. What motivates the most successful resistance trainers? You might think the kind of abs you see every month in muscle and fitness, or increased athletic skill, or weight loss, or improved metabolic health. Sure, all these things go a long way, but true motivation, the kind of motivation that will stay with you through the hard times when the results aren't showing up quite as fast as you would like, comes from here. Every time you crunch, you should be mentally tracking every element of the movement. That means you're watching your breathing pattern, your technique, keeping your shoulders and back out of it. You're on guard against recruiting extraneous muscles to compensate for bad technique. It means you're concentrating on your abs as you work them. Imagine that they're rippling right through your skin as you fully extend and contract them throughout the full range of motion. Shut out all external influences and master your mental focus. Kick starts again